Let's talk about um, clipping masks. A clipping mask is uh, simply a way to clip or cut something out of another shape. Um, I prefer to uh, cut things out of shapes using the cutting paper tutorial uh, with the control J method, um, but in this um, tutorial we're going to use the control G clipping mask method. And I have here <coughs> some things on my page. I have a green paper which is going to just serve as the background, <clears throat> not always necessary in, in clipping things, um, but for the purpose of making this paper uh, that that's going to be necessary. My next layer is um, the template layer and I simply just drew some random, random lines on a paper just for the purpose of this uh, tutorial, but um, the template layer can be any shape. Um, but it needs to have some transparent areas on it. It doesn't really going to work unless it has some transparent areas on it. Um, remember that um, pings are tra have transparent areas on them. And then I have the top layer, which is the paper layer that I want to cut. And so you're always going to p position the paper that you want to cut above the template. And then simply with this paper layer as the active layer, I'm going to hit Control G on the keyboard. And just like that, I have cut stripes out, stripes out of that blue paper. Now there are several other ways. I'm going to hit the Undo button. I can go to the Layer drop-down menu and choose Group with Previous. And you can see there, that's the, there's the Control G shortcut. But if you can't remember the shortcut, you can always find um, this and click on it here. And a third way of doing it is to hold down the Alt key, not the Control key, but the Alt key, and hover between the two lines. And when you see them turn to these circles, click on them, and that groups them together. Okay, once they're grouped together, um, if you want, you can make these one layer. And there are several ways to do that. Um, in my tutorial, um, it shows to lock the two layers. Now in Photoshop Element 6 to lock them, I'm going to click on one layer, hold down my control key, and click on the other layer so that they're both selected, then click on this little lock icon right there. <coughs> and you can see that the icons show up um, right here in the layers palette to indicate that those two are locked. And then if I wanted to, I could go to the layer drop down menu and you see it says merge linked and so I can merge those two linked layers into one layout and the shortcut is for that is control E and so then you can also just cl click control E and, and it puts everything that is uh, locked together into one layer. I'm going to hit undo but the probably the easiest way to make these two one layer is to simply right click and choose merge down and now it makes it um, one layer cut of those stripes. Um, if I were doing the uh, control J method just really quickly I'm going to show that to you. I would hold down the control button, click on the template layer to get marching ants and then um, hit control J on my keyboard and then make these two invisible and you'll see I have cut stripes out of the paper. So um, there's always uh, a lot of ways to do this but what is great about um, the clipping mask in this method is that I can actually resize my stripes if I want um, or uh, resize this paper if I want and so um, you can see uh, with this particular paper it's not going to work it needs to be uh, f full size to match the stripes but in um, if I had let's hit undo Let's say that I had a um, heart, sh uh, well, an arrow shape, because that happens to be the the uh, shape that I'm on, and I'm going to put my paper layer above that shape, 
and then hit control G to group them and you can see now I've cut that shape out of uh, the paper but let's say I think that um, the pattern in the paper itself is too big and and so in this case see I can resize the paper and it makes that texture a lot smaller or if I wanted to resize so that is the one benefit over using the control G method over the control J method is to be able to resize everything okay that let's go on I have a photo here of this uh, large talon that my my son took a photo of and we're going to show you more of a true way um, of a clipping mask. Uh, the control G method that we showed you is the digital scrapbooking world often refers to that as a, a clipping mask but it's not really true to what a clipping mask really is and so we're going to um, fake a clipping mask um, similar to the way you can do a clipping mask in the full version of Photoshop. In the full version of Photoshop you'll find a little button somewhere, a little icon that you can click on and it will just immediately create a clipping mask for you. But this is a cheater's way in Photoshop Elements. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to make sure my photo layer is the active layer for right now and I'm going to go up to the new adjustment layer and I could choose several of these like either solid color levels um, several of these but for for the purposes of this we're just gonna um, use the solid color one then I'm going to just choose any color it, it really doesn't matter and select OK now I'm going to move this layer below my bird layer I'm going to make that photo layer of the bird the active layer and hit control G on my keyboard um, and uh, to group them together now you can see that they're grouped together by this little arrow now if you observe the new adjustment layer there are um, two icons in it this first one you could double click on it and, and change the color but since the color isn't going to matter to us um, we're not going to be uh, utilizing that for this tutorial what um, I want you to learn about in this tutorial is uh, this second icon which is actually a mask now whenever this icon is white it reveals everything and that's why we can see uh, um, the entire photo and the entire orange whenever it is black um, it erases and so um, just quickly I'm going to get the paint bucket and now you can see that um, the entire layer has turned white we can't see anything that's because this uh, layers mask is black now um, before you click on that paint bucket you, you want to click right here on that mask to make sure that it's the active thing that you're working on now I can grab a paintbrush and I'm going to switch the foreground and the background color and I'm gra going to grab a paintbrush and make sure I'm on that mask and just begin drawing and you can see that it well it reveals the bird now if I go down here too far the reason this orange is showing up is because I'm beyond the um, photo and so to fix your mistakes I'm just going to go back to black and remember the black erases and go over that and it disappears again anything that I don't want I do black and then I just switch foreground to um, background color whoops see I don't want that orange you just switch back and forth now if you want you can play with the opacity sliders and when I draw in you can see it's going to be more faded um, if you look now over here at the layers mask you can see some areas that are gray and um, that indicates those more faded areas 
and this is how um, you can get uh, blending in here. Um, let me go back and see if I can get some blending. You you almost have to work it out gradually, uh, slowly um, raising the. Well, I can't do it. I'm so. <laughs> messed up. If you mess up too much instead of hitting the undo button what you can always do is fill that layer again the entire layer with black and start all over. And so what I may want to do to make it gradually fading is to gradually lower my opacity as I go out. And so um, of course you take more time at it and, and do the uh, a smaller brush and a low and change the opacity um, with less uh, less of a change to get it to look better. Um, but if you are actually trying to extract this out of here, um, Let's uh, fill that all back in again. You can go to Edit, Fill Layer with Foreground Color and it will take it all away that way too. guess it would help if I raised my opacity back up. And if you were actually trying to extract this, you would want to zoom way in and use a smaller brush and get right in there and get right up next to the element. And if you goofed, see, and I go through too far, I goof there on purpose, of course, then you go back and get the white and just add it back in. And you can actually extract elements using this kind of clipping mask. And so um, that's it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, just be sure to ask. I'll try to answer them uh, the best I can.